Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to From Corporate to Creative with your host, Kelly Gallia. Our show is designed to help you make the leap from corporate to creative, and if you're already in the creative business, we'll help inspire you to create success on your terms. Each episode, we'll focus on topics to help creative professionals like you to express your creativity, pursue your passions, and find freedom, flexibility, and fun in your own creative business. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to this episode of From Corporate to Creative, sponsored by the Creative Biz Success Kit, available at my website, kellygallia.com, K-E-L-L-Y-G-A-L-E-A.com. And I am your host, Kelly Gallia, and today we are going to be talking about how to own your money. Our guest is Belinda Rosenblum, and she's going to be sharing three secrets to managing your mind and your money despite inconsistent income, financial self-sabotage, and economic concerns. So let me tell you a little bit about Belinda, and we are just so thrilled that we we have her today. Um, She actually left her thriving corporate finance role to address a major unmet need in our communities, transforming the way people think, feel, and act with money to give them back their rightful power over their money mindset and money management. So she's now helping thousands of people discover how owning your money create certainty, security, and the life of financial independence that they deserve. Belinda is president of Own Your Money, LLC, which is a financial coaching and training company, teaching individuals, couples, and business owners how to make managing their finances rewarding and profitable. And we absolutely love that, don't we? So we are so happy again to have you on the show today. Today, Welcome, Belinda. Thank you. I'm so pleased to be here. You sounded great for my introduction. You, you must be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, hey, we are live wow. on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. So, Belinda, you bring a truly unique approach to money, and so I would love for you to share more about that with our listeners today. Sure. So what um, <clears throat> what I noticed is that there's a lot of, people out there, thank goodness, helping individuals, couples, business owners with their investments. These are the financial advisors and planners of the world. And the accountants helping them with their taxes and uh, bookkeeping. And Lord knows uh, they have been busy folks lately. But yet there's this whole unmet need for people who are quite successful in their day job, so to speak, or day careers, right, but they may be confused why their bank accounts just aren't reflecting that. You know, they may feel guilty about what they're purchasing, where their money's going. Fundamentally, though, what I find is that there's just a lack of knowledge about money or finances that keeps them stuck. And this could be, like, about the nuts and bolts of money management itself, or there may be a piece of this money mindset, which I'm going to touch on a bit more today, um, that has them stay almost embarrassed or not able to ask for help. And oftentimes it may be tied to their level of status and success or mm-hmm. other um, other like training, so to speak. I put that in quotes, that they've taught themselves over time that doesn't really serve them, but they haven't really learned another way yet to be more confident, to have more than enough money than than they may need for life's milestones and to be able to live the life they desire while increasing their bank account. A lot of times okay, people first. think it's an either or, right? And I really believe it can be both. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something I definitely learned in the hard way. So I am so glad mm-hmm. that you're sharing this with us. So I'm curious, too, you know, why did you decide to create a new business that was focusing on helping people to own their money? And specifically that term I think is so catchy and and should intrigue us all. 
Oh, thank you. I like it too. <laughs> um, <laughs> and owning your money is just, it's so different than just having money. Um, and I don't think that people really give it enough um, uh, credit in a lot of ways. It, the example that uh, had come to mind recently, I was registering my iPad at the Apple store and he was trying to, the technician was trying to convince me into one-to-one service. And he said, you know, buying this one-on-one service is the difference between having an iPad and owning an iPad. And I was just like, I totally get that. That's what I deal with money all the time. And what I have found in terms of why I decided to start this up is that there's the reality that our life experience is often driven by how we use our money. And how we use our money is driven by what we value and treasure in our lives. And I get that most of us want to fulfill a dream of some kind. For some of those listening, that dream could be starting up their own business. Or it could mean taking their business to the next level so that they can achieve their higher purpose or their passion on this earth. right? And how can our business help us do that? It could be sending kids to college, traveling around the world. Like There are so many dreams that we have. And what I do is help people make that connection between money and realizing their dreams so that they can actually use money as a tool to live the life that they want rather than allowing money to use them, which is often what happens way too much of the time. So even for those listening, just really start to connect with what are your dreams. You know, Do you have a plan for how we're going to start to make that happen and how can money be a tool to do that? Um, you'll hear me talk a lot about action, so that is definitely a theme in all of the work that I do um, in owning your money. Okay, perfect. All right, and, you know, something that you said, I I do want to let people know, too, I didn't mention this earlier, but I have a special report available at my Facebook page, and it helps you to get clarity around what your dreams are. So this very important step that Belinda is talking about you know, focusing on what are your dreams and what does success really mean to you. So if you wanted to go grab that at facebook.com forward slash corporate to creative, that report is there for you and it can help you to start with this process as well. So for anyone who... How opportune. um, Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it was just, it perfectly fit in right there. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to share that too. So the more resources we can give our listeners, the better um, without overwhelming you, without overwhelming you and keeping you focused on specific actions, so that very important action component. So, Belinda, we did promise our listeners, if they had read the description for this episode, that they would discover the three A's that will make or break their financial success. And that's, again, very intriguing. What are these A's, these three A's? Sure. sure. So, um, And these are also the, the same secrets that will help our listeners be able to understand how they can manage their mind and manage their money better. Because I get, and I can tell you that for those people who are just starting out, like get as much of this, just be a sponge, like really soak in all of this great information today, what Kelly offers, what I offer at ownyourmoney.com, because I can tell you I was vastly unprepared for starting my own business. Mm-hmm. I just had a passion, and I'm like, I got to do this, and I set up a shingle, and I started doing it, and amazingly, people weren't all um, like banging down my door right away, <laughs> <laughs> and I what? think that... You know, Shocking, right? It's shocking. <laughs> um, you know, not everybody knew of me yet. Not everybody knew where my door was. And, um, you know, what, what these three A's are, and um, I'll explain them sort of as we go through it, but at a high level, the first A is about ending avoidance and denial. Mm-hmm. The second A is about creating awareness. And the third A is about taking action. So what, you know, these can make or break you because you will stay stuck in the self-sabotage, in the roller coaster of the inconsistent income, in the money worries until we can address these three A's. That's why they're making or breaking your financial success. So I want everybody to understand that, and I actually – put up something on my website at ownyourmoney.com slash radio gift. And radio gift is all one word. So our site is ownyourmoney.com slash radio gift. And we'll hook you up with a um, 
with what I call a money breakthrough session. And I'll do this for the first seven people. I open it up a few slots each time I do one of these radio shows because I get that this whole idea of recognizing that you may not be owning your money and that you might be avoiding something honestly may feel like something you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's why you've been avoiding it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, (laughs) right? And I get that. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm a recovering avoider myself. Like, boy, do I get it. And (laughs) the key part is that we just start to have you see a way out. Literally, it's like we just have to turn on the light in this dark room so that you stop bumping into things and getting yourself hurt. It is really not (laughs) serving you. Very good. Well, we Bad appreciate your generous offer. So everyone, that's go to ownyourmoney.com forward slash radio gift and um, sign up for a money breakthrough session. And if you're one of the first seven, you're going to get that one-on-one with Belinda directly. That is so generous of you, Belinda. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is something not to avoid, but we did talk about <laughs> avoidance. Why yeah. is it that so many of us avoid our finances? Well, I have like 13 reasons. I mean, I've been studying this, and I just find this so interesting. And it's, um, and I, I gather that all of you will, too, once you start to see where do you really fit in. Uh, what I'll do now is at least share just a few of them with you because that way – you can start to see which one you fit into. You know, oftentimes avoider is set up as a whole type around money, yet I believe that everybody has avoider tendencies in them. And instead of continuing to resist it and pretend that it's not there, let's just instead face it. And by starting to recognize why you may avoid, this will certainly help you to work through the process. One of the key reasons is that you were likely never taught. So it's not that um, it's not that you were taught one way and it was a completely wrong way. The reality is that 99% of us were never really taught any sort of formal, solid financial education on money management and especially not on money mindset. So I get that fact, and I want you to stop shoulding on yourself. <laughs> a lot of people say, I should know X. I should know why. I should know how to uh, be better with my money. And I just believe that folks were never taught. I was just on the phone um, with a couple last week, and he makes over $400,000 and doesn't track a dime of it. Made me cringe mm-hmm. a little bit. <laughs> and because they just they have plenty of money in their heads, right, but they've never really looked at it. And he's like, I bought a book on how to do it, and it's like, an inch and a half thick on how to run Quicken. He's like, when the hell am I ever going to run that? He's like, I have this business to run. (laughs) I'm like, I get it. Now you know why people avoid it, right? Because they were never taught, and they haven't found a step-by-step way to do it. And what I can tell you is that the step-by-step ways are out there, and that's partly why I created this whole business around that. So all I want you to start to get is, you know, start to determine what your needs are. One other thing is that, a lot of people have created quite an identity for themselves around not being good with money. Mm-hmm. And there's this idea that even just releasing that would have you be less of who you are. This might be just a tad woo-woo for us practical folks like myself, but I have found this to be true. So, And one woman even emailed me after I did a, um, a program like this, and she said, you know, I think I might be addicted to the pain. Yeah. And it's an interesting way to think about it because we just I know I I'm already sort of deep into this topic, but it's it's just important to start to recognize who you are with money and what you view your identity as. Because then uh, the last tip that I'll um give you now on why people avoid is that people are often just in a state of of, of denial. So they may think, "Oh, I have money." So it's not so bad. I don't need to worry about it. And there really are so many easy things that we can put in place that will just create a whole new reality with so much less stress. But yet people have often gotten kind of resigned that um, the level of stress that they have is what they need to have. 
um, and often a little bit resigned with the level of embarrassment or shame that they may be feeling um, as a result, too. Right. Now, I'm so glad that you've shared all these things, and I certainly don't mind getting woo-woo. I mean, I've shared with my audience before that this was one of the biggest lessons that I learned, too, in setting up my business is, you know, there were some of these avoidance tendencies. So I've been an avoider because I was in a state of denial that my life would change at all (laughs) when I left corporate. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, I took it to the next level in thinking and making up a new money mindset for myself that I would have to make do with less than I had been accustomed to. And that was a Mm -hmm. huge problem, huge problem. Yeah, I I think I had had the the, um, flip side, the... um, I started to, um, I sort of didn't understand that I wasn't going to make six figures right out of the gate. Right. Because I, 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 sort of similar, right? I mean, that's what I was doing before, and then now I'm starting up a new business, so why wouldn't that happen right away? And, <laughs> um, you know, there's just even this whole idea of growth versus net, and I'll tell everybody out there, like, I get that there's a difference, and I want you to get that there's a difference. This is a little bit of a sidebar, but super important when it comes to money, no matter what level you're at, because a lot of people will just talk about gross revenues. And they miss the fact that you have expenses for your business that need to come off of those gross revenues to get to the net, which is what you're actually taking home. And then we can start to look to pay um, for all of our bills and our life and all that sort of stuff. And when we get into awareness, maybe I'll touch on that in a little bit more detail. Okay, good. Very good. So what are some steps then that we can take? So recognizing this avoidance is obviously one of the first things, but Mm -hmm. what can our listeners do to put an end to this avoiding? So one of the areas is to let yourself off the hook. Just really get that you never learned it. It is a learnable skill, but just you haven't learned it yet. And yet is the key uh, the key word there. And you just need to commit to the learning, right? Once you let yourself look, you're like, I gave it my best, and that was my best at the time. Now that I've listened to this, this is sort of like your wake-up call, actually. Now I realize that I can start to do something different. Um, a second tip I'll give is for folks to really know their why, Know your inspiration for starting a business, for really taking better control over your money. Once you know that, everything starts to get easier because you're driven from a higher purpose place. Uh, One other tip is to open and review your mail. I know that sounds a little silly, and a lot of people may say, well, I do, I open it, but do you actually review it? Do you actually look at it? I had one woman in a workshop that I had had, uh, given, and she heard me say that, and usually the whole room sort of has this little bit of nervous laughter, and she said, what, but I actually started looking closer at my statements, and I saw how little I was actually paying off on my credit cards, for instance, and I saw how much I was paying for some of these expenses like cable that I didn't even know how to access all those channels. <laughs> and she said within two years, she paid off over $8,000 in debt. Wonderful. Because she started doing this and she realized that it was no longer okay to stay avoiding and that she just needed to look closer. And I get it. I mean, it was 12 years ago, and I was totally overwhelmed at my own dining room table, filled with shame and guilt, and I literally was afraid that my father was going to get kicked out of his nursing home. That's how bad I had let it get for like a A player at work, but I just wasn't spending my time at home dealing with this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I do these money breakthrough sessions, when I do the um, coaching and classes that um, I really understand where you're coming from and throw you a lifeline to get out of them, to get out of there. Well, I appreciate you sharing such a personal experience, and, and that's what I really want to hit home here with everyone is – Although it feels intensely personal, we've all had an experience like this in our lives, and we are not alone in this, and there's not a reason to avoid it because you have experts who've also been there and gone through it and want to help you. Um, So stop shitting on yourself. (laughs) You just have to say it slowly. As long as you say it slowly, we're okay. Shooting. (laughs) Yep. 
Okay, excellent. Funny how that works. Well, huh? let's. Yep. <laughs> hmm. And remember, too, a way to um, stop avoiding and dealing with this is go over to ownyourmoney.com forward slash radio gift and get signed up for a money breakthrough session. Be one of the first seven and take advantage of this. <laughs> yeah, so great. Actually, I just got on. notification. Somebody did. So there you go. Look All at right. that. One's gone. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I know. I wish I could be greedy and take one, too, but I'll sign up for a separate session with you. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll take care of you. (laughs) I think there's always always something to learn no matter at what phase we are with our life or with our business. Oh, it's so true. And and I want, actually, I I know you just sort of touched on it to the side, but, like, for everybody to get that, like, even folks like Kelly and I are still learning, and we're still like, I have a business coach that's several steps ahead of me. I'm constantly doing work to keep myself clean and inspired and giving my best to what I do around money. And I say clean because it's like a new level, new devil. Mm-hmm. So I hit uh, mindset barriers at um, when I grossed 100 grand, when I grossed 200 grand, when I grossed 300 grand, right? As I would keep raising my rates. And so it's important that you have support to be able to help you to do that. And sometimes people just even like to be on my mailing list because they get the continuous support to stretch themselves and go after what they really want and what's important in their lives. Excellent. So I think it's a super important point you're making. I I definitely agree with that, working with people who are at a bigger level and keep reaching up and getting help and and get that hand up too, really. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about this next A, which is awareness. So what is it that we need to be more aware of? So there are three main pillars that I touch on around this awareness point because so many people are living so unconsciously when it comes to their money. And that could be anything from even knowing where they last used their credit card. It always strikes Mm -hmm. me when you call up a credit card company and ask them a question and they ask you that. And a lot of people don't know. Like They really have to think about that <laughs> or how much they spent. I mean, literally sometimes I'll catch myself and I'll be walking out of the grocery store and I'll just take a moment and I'll think to myself, how much was that charge I just made? Right. Because, I'm, again, I'm constantly making sure that I'm staying as aware as I possibly can and I want everybody to imagine how they can start to do that for themselves too. Sometimes, I'll, I mean, I'll have accountants that will tell me um, – you know, a lot of my clients say, can you help me find my money? I just filled out my taxes. It shows I grossed 100 grand or 200 grand, or that's what I made in my corporate job, and I don't know where it went. All I know is I have like two grand in the bank, so right. it went somewhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the key areas is uh, money, and most people just live so unconsciously that I want people to start to instead recognize that their inaction is costing them money right now. And part of what's key to managing through their inconsistent cash flow is to understand what you need to be making each month to cover your personal expenses in one bucket, right, because we want you to eat, we want the roof over your house, right, all these things (laughs) over your head, and we want your business expenses in a separate bucket. And, And separate is super important. This goes for especially for the launcher, but also for the person that's established in their business. Because I see way too often people will run everything out of one bank account, one credit card, and not differentiate the two. So as you start to gain awareness, start to use this tip and to say, wow, how can I figure out what it is that I'm spending on a personal basis and on a uh, business basis. And if you do the ownermoney.com slash radio gift, you'll also be able to access the template that we use for tracking all of your personal money. And then that way you can start to identify, okay, I need to have at least, maybe it's 3000 maybe it's 5000 maybe it's $7,000 left over after I pay my business expenses to be able to pay for my personal life without incurring credit card debt, without um, stressing myself out beyond compare um, in running this business. And once you do that, and I devised it, it's like a secret weapon or a secret tool, I devised it in a way that it highlights 
your unconscious spending. It's pretty cool. So I highly recommend everyone to grab the template, and it's all on the same gift page. We just made it super easy. Um, because if you think to yourself, gosh, how much money could I be losing or could it be costing me every month by not taking the actions that I need to take? So mm-hmm. literally it could be two hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars a month. And the, the vision I have is people are walking down the street with holes in their pockets, right? Money is just le- falling out, it's just dropping yeah. out. So literally, and if you think, gosh, if it could be a thousand dollars a month, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. That's sixty thousand dollars in five years. Like that's, yeah, that's that real dollars. So fast, and it's yeah, it real money. So fast, yeah, totally agree. So that's the money pillar. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. Maybe I'll go quickly over the mind pillar, and then we'll kind of move on. Does that work? Sounds good. Just half an hour flies by. Holy cow! <laughs> it does. Um, so on the mind pillar, and this is really key to the overcoming the financial self sabotage that I touched on, is that you need to understand that that you do have a mindset component to what you do, okay, and to who you are. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like just that little voice that pops up. It's that person in you that wants to and probably unconsciously puts the foot on the brake when one when consciously you may think, okay, I want to be moving forward with my foot on the gas. What happens is that we need to gain awareness and remove the limiting beliefs and blocks first so that you can take the actions and then believe that your actions will create results. Otherwise, you just keep taking actions, but if you don't really believe them, then you keep getting the same results. And oftentimes people stay so small because they don't necessarily believe in themselves. They don't believe they can do it. They don't believe that they can move forward in as powerful a way. And I actually have a new program starting up called Making Money Flow, Four Steps to Get Out of Your Own Way and Realize Your Financial Dreams. So for those listening right now, it's starting up next week. And even if you're listening to it a little bit down the road, um, you can jump into the program a few weeks in, and otherwise it's going to uh, become a product as well. So best bet is always start with a short session with me, and then I truly listen. Like I don't just put people into a program right off the bat. I listen to what's going on for you and help you find what will be the best fit because that's what's key to you moving forward to the third pillar is momentum. And then we need to get the body in motion. Right now, you know, there's the saying or the law, I guess, right? The body that is not in motion stays stays not in motion, whereas on in motion continues. Um, And so that's what momentum is all about, and that's what action is all about. Okay, good. Yeah, take that first step, and it's just amazing how that momentum starts to build and build. And then it all starts to be really fun, too. (laughs) Awesome. You're so right. And I think that sometimes when we get so caught up in all of this and in the worry and the stress and the shame, I think that we end up forgetting that our businesses are made to make a difference in the world, but they're also there to be a vehicle for us to become the person that we want to become and have fun doing it. I believe fun is a key component to how we can live our life. But I do, too. Sometimes it's a choice. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. I think, Belinda, you have shared so many wonderful suggestions and ideas and ways for us to take action. So do we have anything more we want to say about that third A of action? The the key part is for you to adopt my five-word motto, and that's done is better than perfect. Mm-hmm. So think about it. You know, great is good. Done is better. So how can you just really start to do something, even if it may not be at the level that you might want, just to move you forward and look to grow your business, step out of your comfort zone, do whatever that needs to be, because I believe that a lot of us have an inkling of what our next step is or could be, but yet we're not doing it. So let's just move forward right now. Have this be your wake-up call. Your first step can be going to ownyourmoney.com slash radio gift because as soon as you start to tell the universe, I'm ready to take action to own my money, it is amazing, literally by the time we even have the call together, what is going to start to be awesome and showing up in your life. 
Excellent. We want that. And everyone, be sure to celebrate your successes as well. I know Belinda's big on that. You know I'm really big on that. And even if that step is just going to her site, going to ownyourmoney.com forward slash radio gift, taking that step, celebrate it and recognize yourself for taking that action. Well, awesome. thank you so much for being with us today, Belinda. And I'm assuming everyone can connect with you by going to that link as well and get to your Facebook and such. Yeah, and please do. We we post uh, tips on our Facebook fan page at Own Your Money, uh, Twitter, you name it. We're out there. YouTube, I mean, it's all about really spreading the message to help you to own your money instead of it owning you. It is Wonderful. your choice, and take the better choice today. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, with that, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And this, again, is Kelly Gallia with From Corporate to Creative and Belinda Rosenblum with Own Your Money. Thank you, Belinda. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Kelly. This was fun, and I, I look forward to uh, all of our listeners really putting it into action. Me too. Keep me posted. I will. Thanks. Take okay. care. Thank you.